In today's video, I want to talk about unlearning the way we spend our time. In my last video, I talked about the importance of protecting that gray matter that's between our ears. If you missed that video, check it out in this link above. I'll put it also in the description. So we're going to talk about time control today. And I know there's nothing sexy about this. You, this is not going to be yet another boring time management video. So if you look at number two, that's where we're at, where you are in step number two of the framework. If you miss that, download the workbook in the description below. So, but the second part of this is going to be about controlling our time, having going from being, having no time to being actually being efficient. I've heard that. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. I promise you, you do. It's just got to be a priority. And I'm going to hopefully give you some tips and tricks that are going to help you be able to better place, manage, and take care of your time today. Why it matters. Our time and attention and energy are among the scarcest resource we have. I am all about these days practicing protectionism. I defend my time at all costs. Working 40 hours a week for me is plenty. If you caught my last couple, the beginning video in this series, I was used to working 70, 80, 90 hours a week. That was normal. I can tell you, you don't get a whole lot more accomplished working 70, 80, 90 hours a week than if you have only have 40 hours. Whatever time slot you allow, it will get filled up, I promise you. So I want you to have plenty of time to do great work, to be competitive and to get the important stuff done. 40 hour weeks are made up of eight hour days. For me, eight hours is a long time. You think about it, I can fly from Chicago to London in about eight hours. But why does eight hours feel so short when we're at work? It's because our time is sliced into dozens of smaller bits. We're using that Ginsu knife and slicing our attention it, you know, all the time throughout the course of the day. Small bits of distraction all day long. But if you can't fit everything that you want into 40 hours a week, we need to get better at picking what we actually do, not working more hours. It's a choice. So let's talk about the best way to get everything done in 40 hours a week. If you're a business owner, you're going to need to pay special attention to this uh, if you have staff on your payroll as well. Think about it. the first thing that you pick up in the morning is usually a device. From the minute we wake up in the morning, we are putting our brains on high alert. We're looking at email. We're checking social media. We're looking at the news. Our brain is on high alert all day long. We're task switching all day long. We can't seem to go to the bathroom without having a device with us. That's the problem. That cycle continues all day long where we're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And yes, there's the definition of that. It is doom scrolling. We are addicted to distraction. Many of us are fatigued by the end of a long workday, but what we may not have accomplished anything, which can be super frustrating because if you're like me, I like to actually get stuff done. I feel like to feel a sense of accomplishment at the end of my workday. Why can't we seem to get anything done? Because we're frequently interrupted by distractions such as email, social media, the ding notifications going off of Slack all day long. We hop between projects all day long without completing anything. That's the problem and that's what we need to fix today. One of the best ways that I have found myself personally and those that I coach is task batching. And this is called a number of things, calendar blocking, whatever you want to call it. This has been basically one of the best practices that I've put into and made a habit. Basically task batching, it allows you to avoid checking in and multitasking all day long. We know that time is money. We need to figure out how to make the most of those 24 hours. That's crucial if we're going to have success and we're going to feel like our business is working for us. But how do we turn task matching into a superpower as a as an underdog entrepreneur? I did a LinkedIn poll uh, a few months ago. And I ask people, do you batch processes? You batch process your daily tasks like email, to do list, etc. It was split between all of them, but I noticed almost a third had no idea what task batching is. So that's what I want to talk about today. What actually is it? 
Task matching isn't really a new concept. I actually got this idea from Tim Ferriss, his book, Four Hour Workweek. I'll put a link in the description below. But basically he used the analogy of doing our laundry where we do it, you know, we separate everything into batches of laundry. Task batching is similar. It's a planning method. It's a process of grouping together all of the related jobs or tasks and then working on them in a systematic manner until they're done. It's like doing our laundry. It's doing our laundry for our tasks. So that mentality, if you haven't seen my video on how to batch your tasks, I'll link that in the description. I'll also put that above as well. So like, think about it, batching your tasks like SOP creation. And I talk a lot about systems and process, but having a process, having a dedicated time each week for me to work on my processes is super important to me. So I have a time slot on my calendar every single week to do that. If you'd like a copy of this efficiency calendar, by the way, I'll put a link in the description as well. You can uh, go, feel free to grab that. But everything for me is about working in a theme of the day. Everything for like Sunday, that is growth. That's when I read books, I take courses, I do, I level up what goes into my, and into my brain and I plan out my week. Monday's all about quick wins. Tuesday, I do support, whether internal or external. Wednesdays is sales. Thursday is all about operations, Friday's marketing, Saturday's family day. So again, this is just a sample and this has changed multiple times over the years, but this is where I started. Started to try to get control of my day and my time by putting things in context, things that I generally do uh, every single day, but only doing them at a certain time of day. And Tim Ferriss talked about it, that in his uh, book as well, batch tasking, task batching your emails. So let's talk about some of the benefits of putting all of your tasks and doing them in batches. For me, it allows me to get into that deep work and creativity when I have everything off and I know that I'm going to get to it at certain points. For me, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. is when I check my inbox and go social media, do all of the stuff on the social media but I don't worry about it in between those times. That allows me to get in deep states of work and creativity. The other thing it does for me is I don't waste any time trying to prepare things. I actually, if I know I gotta work on something, I just move it to that day of the week, the time slot where I'm gonna work on it, then it is out of my head. So I don't waste any time trying to organize everything every day. It also allows me to take a look at the things that I'm doing every day and to stop doing some of the things that I shouldn't be doing. Can I automate it? Can I delegate it? Can I just delete it? That's what task batching allows me to do. It allows me to see clearly all the stuff that I shouldn't be doing, but allows me to also focus on the stuff I should be doing. So think about it. When you do that, when you have things and you've laid out your day, you are in control. You're not the, at the mercy of someone else's agenda. Think about that. When you get an email, you are at somebody else's agenda. They are expecting something from you. So when, but when you check that certain times a day, you are in control of when you respond. And sometimes it is, sometimes it's hard. It's about resetting your expectations. For me, task batching brings me calm. It helps me to focus and feel in control because yes, we entrepreneurs are control freaks. So what, what things can you batch? It's a common question that I get. What, what do I batch? Creative time, if you're a creator, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a freelancer, and again, if you are an entrepreneur, you should be creating things, whether that's business processes or just time to actually promote your business, to get creative, to do videos like this one. But having time set on your calendar every single week for creative time is super important. Having time to do admin stuff, that boring admin stuff like filing or whatever, whatever it is, doing book you're doing QuickBooks, Zero, whatever it is, but your admin time is not email time. I wanna do a quick poll. Do you have your op email open all day long? Drop that in the comments for me as well, uh, because this leads into my next point. If you have email open all day long, I challenge you, I put a challenge out there. I'll put the gauntlet down. I challenge you to scheduling your inbox and social media for a couple times a day, two, maybe three. 
again, Tim Ferriss's book, Four Hour Work Week, he recommends checking email only twice a day. But putting it on your calendar, don't don't look at it. it it's hard. It takes discipline, but that will allow you to get into that creative flow. Having a certain day of the week, time of the day, whatever it is to have office out, out of office meetings, and this can be virtual too. I only I have only do meetings certain days of the week where I know I have the energy to put forward to it and I have the ability and I'm getting all of the rest of the stuff done in my life. Setting time aside to do marketing. A lot of people don't have this on the calendar and they wonder why their business doesn't grow. Have time to do your marketing. Household and personal tasks. Yes, there is no such thing as work-life balance. It's just life. Uh, but having a time slot to do household and personal tasks. So how do you get it started? I'm going to give you a quick how to get started with this. Make a list of all the typical tasks that you do. This can be paper, can be in ClickUp, can be a Notion, whatever. The tool's not important. Make a list of all the typical things that you do in a day, all the things you typically do in a, in a course of a week. And again, this, you can add to this, but make a list of all those tasks and then start to see which of those tasks are common, which of those that you can batch process, that you can do your laundry and do those tasks in certain points of the week, certain points in your day, and then put them on your schedule. I do my weekly planning on Sunday evening. So I actually, I know, and again, doesn't always work out perfectly. My schedule's not always the same every single week. But when I look at my schedule on Sunday evenings, then I'm able to go ahead and schedule the batches of what things I have available that week. And again, the course of you can move things around. This is all about you having control of your schedule. And then try it out. Do the work for a while. Track it. See how things are going. Be willing to adjust. Nothing is sketched in stone. I promise you. But if you want to take this step a step further, get accountability. Get a coach. Join an accountability group. Uh, a, an online community. But do a challenge where you all work on those things together and you work on, you know, your ability to put things into batches. My last pro tip here as we wrap this video is do not use your email as your to-do list. Outlook, Gmail, whatever email tool that you're using is the worst to-do list. And why do I say that? If you have email open and you're trying to get work done, Emails constantly come in all day long. And if you're constantly interrupted, you're slicing your time and attention away from getting things done. And you will feel constantly overwhelmed. So it's time to break the addiction to our devices. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about how our daily choices affect whether or not we'll be a success at building a calm company. See you in the next one.